Hello and welcome, my name is Valdis from Dikadata and today we will be looking at Dell Technologies 16th generation server, particularly the R660 today. This is the 16th generation of Dell server that has just been released. We are currently looking at the box of a Dell R660, um, as you can see, big brown, not very exciting from the outside. So let's crack it open and see if there's anything a little bit more interesting inside. It's nice to see the lack of plastic in here at the moment. Uh, right, what have we got in here? So we've got the nice long box, which will be, no doubt, the rack rails. Yep, rack rails with instructions how to mount them into your rack. Rack installation instructions. Velcro for cabling. There we go. Let's have a look what's in this one. This will be the cable management arm that will sit at the back of the rack rails we just had a look at for those people that require cable management arms. The one large one left over. We have Warranty information, Power Edge R660 Getting Started Guide. Enterprise Product Safety, Environmental and Regulatory Information, Dell End User License Agreement. I'm sure nobody reads them. We have, if required, two IEC C13 to C14 plugs for plugging it into PDU. Still wrapped in plastic, I see. And one bezel. You've got the key to lock it if required and this is the LCD bezel so it's got the little monitoring port on the front it gives you a little bit of information like um, IP address, some IDRAC information, you can also put temperature. I do know I've had a partner say that they use it uh, for environmental monitoring so they'll have it show what the ambient temperature is in a room uh, just to make sure that everything's running smoothly and that's it so not much plastic in there which is really nice to see I do know that Dell are conscientiously reducing as much waste as possible everything else is cardboard easily recyclable right now we have the server foam packaging so it doesn't get damaged in transport Build sheet to make sure that it's got all of your options that you've uh, chosen in the config. And then the server itself. Right, now through the magic of film, we're going to pause right there. We'll clear out the boxes and we'll have a closer look at the server. Right, as you can see, we have a 1RU server uh, in Dell 16 generation server lineup. You can also get the 2RU, R760 and there are a few other options. but. Let's focus on the R660 for today. So we're looking at the 2.5 inch by 10 configuration on the drive config here. You can have an eight config and anything up to, if you choose the E3.S Gen 5 drives, 16 half height 2.5 inch drives, which is absolutely insane. I had a quick play in the configurator. You can get over 100 terabytes of NVMe storage into one RU. The density is very impressive. Um, being the 16th generation, we have also gone up to Intel's fourth generation scalable processor, codenamed Sapphire Rapids. Uh, this box can also go up to 32 DDR5 DIMMs. We'll talk about the DDR5 in a little while longer, but up to 32 DIMMs, so you can get up to eight terabytes worth of RAM into one RU. Occasionally we get people talking about what, what's happened to um, blade servers and that style of product. When you can squeeze this much compute and storage and RAM into one RU, you don't really need a blade server option anymore. It's, it's very impressive what you can squeeze into density these days. Uh, right, I guess let's crack it open and have a look what's inside. So, we've taken off the cover here. Shh. 
So at the front here, we've got the high performance fans. Through the middle, we've got the 32 DIMMs slots for the RAM. We've got the two CPU slots. You can, in the fourth generation Intel scalable processors, you can go up to 56 core per CPU, which is pretty impressive. They're starting to catch up to, uh, to AMD, which is really good to see. And then you've got your two power supplies at the back here, uh, fully redundant and all of that goodness. Everything's easily, toollessly changeable inside. So here we've got the heat shroud. You can remove that very easily to be able to remove your fans nice and toollessly. Two little turbojet fans in each. Hot, easy to replace if they ever break. I don't think they do that regularly. You've also got quick release PCIe risers, which you can then put in your upgrade cards as required. Is this one removable? Everything's removable if I hit the right button. Two risers, PCI riser one and four. Underneath we have the OCP3 network card, which is the same as in the 15th gen server. So they've managed to keep the open networking platform going here, which is really good to see. As I said, hot swap power. Easy to remove those ones if required. Dell have put a really big focus on the thermals. They do every generation and they've done it once again in this generation, really focused on the hot air movement from front to back. So that's why you've got your power supplies on either side. You've got very evenly spaced CPU, RAM. You've got the evenly spread out fans so that you can really get that, the idea of the flow of the air that will go through this. They've put a really big engineering focus on this one. This is for both keeping the server cool, but also for sustainability. So all Dell servers, they've got great results on the EPEAT rating system. They've got some servers that are rated silver and quite a f more than 40 that are rated bronze, showing that they're really focused on getting that energy rating down. And that's partly through to making sure that the airflow and energy use to cool the servers is as efficient as possible. But just all these small add-ons make a big difference, spreading out the power supplies, making sure that everything flows as efficiently and optimally as possible. Right, as with all Dell servers, there are many options available to make your life as easy as possible. If you want to install them yourselves, no problem. You can choose no install options. But if you want to take, let Dell take the heavy lifting, you can get them to do rack and stack for basic unboxing and getting it into the server room for you, all the way up to their Pro Deploy and Pro Deploy Plus offerings, which is fully managed by Dell, where they will make sure that it's a turnkey solution. You go in, turn it on, and it runs as required. With all Dell servers, you've got everything up to seven years warranty. So you've got a really nice long lifespan for every hardware option you choose to purchase. Any Dell product that comes with Pro Deploy gives you access to Cloud IQ, which is Dell's cloud portal for hardware monitoring. So if you have multiple Dell servers, you've got a really great portal where you've got the whole traffic light approach to errors. Green, good, orange, let's have a look. Red, let's really get something going. Something's gone wrong in that server. Cloud IQ is a really big topic that would be for a separate video. Right, specifically around the 16th generation server, what makes this one different to previous generations? I have to admit, it's more of a evolution rather than revolution. The biggest differences in this generation are that we've gone up to DDR5. That is by far the biggest change. DDR5 does bring a lot of advantages to it. In going with the making the server as energy efficient as possible, DDR5 RAM is more efficient than DDR4. It is also twice as fast. Plus, if you choose to go down the DDR5 path today, you do have that peace of mind for longevity. DDR5 is a new normal in servers. Moving forward, the next couple of generations of servers will all be running DDR5. So once you're on the ground with DDR5 today, you know you've got that speed and capacity moving into the future. The other big change that we do have is we've gone up to the fourth generation Intel scalable processors, Sapphire Rapids. They've this is just, again, this is just more of an evolution onto the third generation. We've got some higher core counts, as mentioned in previously. We got up to 56 cores. So in a single RU, you can get up to 112 
cores in one RU, which is very impressive density if you do need that kind of density in your environment. The other big change that you can do is we have the smart NICs available now uh, in the back. This is a reasonably new, um, reasonably new technology where you've got the DPU on the NIC. This is where you can offload some of the networking functions onto the network card to relieve CPU cycles. So an example could be that if you need a specific firewall directly on the server, you can actually install it on the DPU on the NIC and that will then run your firewall for you and it won't take up any of your CPU clocks. Also makes it safer that you've got that firewall sitting at the NIC before it actually hits any major functions of the server itself. Currently, only single DPU is available to config. They do have dual DPU coming later in a later release, but at the moment we're stuck to single DPU and that is across the NVIDIA and AMD range only for the time being. Let's flip this around. There are a few other points to have a look at at the back as I scratch the table. Another upgrade that we had when we went to the 15th generation server was that we went to the hot swap boss card at the back. They've made another upgrade in the 16th generation server where we are now up, we've upgraded to NVMe rather than SSD. So you've got hot swap, NVMe, boss cards all the way up to 960 gig. Really good for running your hypervisor or OS on these ones now, especially if you go for the diskless chassis where this is just for compute. On the back, you can see we've got the OCP, OCP3 network card. We've got the iDrag port and a couple of one gig ports. The LAN on motherboard one gig ports. Everything else is pretty standard on the back there. We've got no PCIe risers in, uh, installed in this model. So keeping on going with that redesign of the airflow from the front to the rear of the server, it comes, it's everything from the bezel backwards they've redesigned. So the bezel still keeps Dell's signature hexagonal pattern, but they've actually redesigned this one so that you've got slightly better airflow from front to rear. Let's put this one on. Very pretty. This server has been configured with free air movement. But if you do have a more power intensive, say the 350 watt CPUs and maybe a GPU, they'll do offer direct liquid cooling as an option if you have the infrastructure available uh, to install it as such. It was really good to see in the unboxing side of this that there was a lot less plastic than you'd expect um, or that traditionally you've probably seen in a server. The actual server hasn't been wrapped in a bag and all the rest. And this comes down to Dell's continued uh, commitment to being environmentally friendly. So within the server itself, there is everything up to 35% re recycled materials in the server. This is part of Dell's moonshot goals for 2030 to have up to 50% recycled materials in, in all of their servers. So it's really good to see that they've put a really big focus on this one. If you do go down the path where you require multiple servers, they'll also have the option to go for a multi-pack solution. This is where you can choose up to eight servers and they will pack them together, which the stats are you end up with 58% less packaging and 270% less cost of transport. Every single percentage point matters when you're trying to cut down your emissions. So that's really good to see on that front as well. Right, that's the overview of Dell 16 generation server. If you are interested in getting some more information on this or any other Dell product, please reach out to the Dell team at Dicker Data. Thanks for watching.